In this video, I'm going to be breaking down my day trading routine from the very start of the day all the way through to the end, what I'm looking for in the markets, what instruments I'm trading and exactly what time I'm looking at them. Stay tuned and let's get this day started. Make sure we hit that subscribe button. So it's 7am, uh, just got here to the gym. This is me filming my daily trading routine for you guys. Um, so yeah, just at the gym, seven o'clock, I'll be here for an hour. I'm not gonna be one of those saddos that films inside. So um, I'll let you know once my gym workout is done and I'm back at my trading desk, ready to go for the day. So step one, hit the gym, get uncomfortable. Gym done, now time to get back to the charts. Go check everything out. Go look into GME stock, seen as uh, Raw and Kitty has posted a huge portfolio on GME. See what that's all about. Get involved in the markets and uh, I'll update you as soon as I'm back to my charts. See you all soon guys. So if you fancy yourself getting into the markets but you don't know how to get started, then check out my investment masterclass. This is a pre-recorded course which comes with a money back guarantee to say that if you don't make money within the first 12 months, we'll refund you the course value. So that just shows you how confident I am in the education that we teach within this. And ultimately you won't need any other education than this course. So if you want to go and grab this insane education, then check the link in the description description called Investment Masterclass. So we're now on the charts, we're gonna be breaking down what we're looking at. It's 9 a.m. in the morning, we're gonna be looking at what positions are attractive to us. At this moment in time, we're seeing a lot of US dollar strength. And um, so focusing around that, hence why I'm looking at the US dollar against the Japanese yen pair. We can see obviously it's been in a staggering uptrend throughout the pretty much majority of this year. So focusing on US dollar against the Japanese yen is where my focus is gonna be. We've obviously got um, strong US dollar interest rates. We've got weak yen interest rates and therefore we're seeing a large amount of US dollar buying against the Japanese yen pair. And therefore when we look at the charts, we're looking at these entries. And right now um, we had this obviously entry last week. We're just waiting for price to come back down now to these moving averages and potentially take a nice long position. So that's US dollar yen. Let's now move away and go have a look at pound yen. Pound yen is looking a lot more interesting for me. Um, we're coming back down to this 200 moving average. We're just gonna keep eyes on to see whether or not we test these lows and see where the slowdown takes place. I'm going to be waiting for the first hour of buying to actually come in before I then take my potential long position to the upside where I'll be looking to target previous highs. An area to be concerned about or to at least uh, keep in mind is that it failed to break down um, the previous high. So um, it's rejected that. So early targets may be back at that previous high is the first area of concern. And gold has obviously reached up at the highs there of 2,400. I am expecting further downside weakness on that. So not touching it for now. We can see the price has stalled off of these highs. So staying completely away from gold when I break down my day-to-day -day, uh, positions. When we look at the UK FTSE, we're seeing further surge to the upside. Um, we had good data out of China, so breaking down that information and keeping tabs on where we see the FTSE going. So we're looking for intraday plays long on the FTSE, so we're keeping a close eye on that. Um, my focus is actually turning towards orange juice, which is um, making quite a large amount of news at this moment in time as we're seeing price really spike highly. We are seeing it gap down at this moment in time. This is due to a large amount of uh, bad weather, both flooding and then dry spells, um, specifically within Florida and also Brazil. Um, and there's also, I'm gonna say like an orange fungus um, or um, issue around the oranges at this moment in time which is causing orange juice prices to surge and um, we have seen that predominantly this entire year um, and we are selling off now at this crazy high of hitting nearly five dollars 
Um, so I'm waiting to see where price will stall on orange juice because I generally do believe that this is going to continue to rally throughout the remaining year. So trading orange juice futures is an area of focus. So overall, I'm going to be panning out and keeping tabs on these positions, specifically focused around pound against the Japanese yen as that is setting up on the hourly time frame. Now also part of my trading day, very interesting today on QuiverQuant, um, we should see the Congress rebalancing of portfolios. So I'm going to be looking that, digesting that information to see what positions they have been purchasing and why, and see if there's any really specific purchases around committees that they're sitting on. As we know, Congress buys over a long period of time outperform the S&P, so it's an area of focus for me. And specifically, if we can get those stocks within the last five days, and if it's trading lower than what the member of Congress bought in, then it could be a good upside position. So stay tuned. I'm going to be coming back to the charts. Guys, check out our giveaway in the description. Just make sure you click the link. If you fancy yourself a chance at winning some awesome prizes from our famed algorithms all the way to our online courses, our weekly lessons, you name it, you can get your hands on these prizes for free. So make sure you check out the raffle in the description. So we've now come to 2.30 in the afternoon and at this point what I'm doing is I'm looking at the US markets, I'm looking at volatility and I'm looking at penny stocks. I'm looking at opportunities of stocks that have low value, that have spiked up for unknown reasons. A great example lately would be GameStop, GME. And when we look at GameStop and GME, um, obviously Rory and Kitty came out talking about a big position, then he had his YouTube live stream and it went from 47 down to 27. These are the sort of examples that I'm looking at. You can see the volume has been huge again today with over 118 million. Um, so when we start looking at this, this is areas that we want to see a focus because if we could take advantage of volatility, um, then we will do. Um, I'm not really one of those guys that's going to be risking short selling against GME just because we've seen how it's happened in the past. So I look at a modified scanner and I look at uh, US movers and you can see we look at stocks like this. DSY here has gaps up 131%. I like it where it's sitting flat and then the spike is a lot higher. So this isn't something that I would be looking at shorting as an idea. But let's now move on to KWE. So KWE is sort of like a prime example here of, of what I would um, be looking at. So what I'm trying to look at is pretty much hype. So penny stocks rallied based off of rumors or um, some small positive news that's going to be short term, short live with a long term goal never fulfilled, the debt's too big on the company, they don't have enough cash runway. Basically look to ride these in on short positions for 30 to 50%. Um, I can see here that this one here on the news down here says it valued up to 48 million in contracts, so maybe not so much of a short sell, but we'll have a look at the fundamentals a little bit further anyway. Um, so that's KWE, let's have a look at ICC. So this is interesting, this is about investigating whether the sale of ICC holdings is fair to shareholders. Again, I'm gonna stay clear of that. Let's have a look at Hover, um, hasn't rallied enough on this one. Let's have a look at AMST now. Now when we look at AMST, um, overall we can see that this stock is predominantly spiked up, came all the way back down. So you can see like from high to sell off there was 60% from high to sell off there was 70%. And then we had this spike up with price literally sitting sideways coming up to three, four, and it's now been sitting along sideways. And we're now short on AMSD. Basically planning on riding this short back to the downside, making 30, 40%, nice and simple. So let's now have a quick look at the fundamentals behind this and you'll see a little bit further of why I'm utilizing this as a position. So when we look at AMST, it's got a small market cap, $8.6 million. Um, it's not really done anything on the year. You can see, look, highly volatile share price, has less than a year cash runway, has less uh, than 1 million in revenue, um, doesn't have a meaningful market cap. All of these things are good for us when we want a company to do badly. You can see its earnings are also minus $4.2 million. So not looking good. Um, if we carry on going, it doesn't even have a fair value. Um, it's peer average, it's ridiculously high, 33 times. But we're gonna keep looking through and see if we can see any good news about this company. 
And as of now, we can't really see any good growth. We can see there that we've got earnings, free cash flows looking pretty bad. And let's go straight to financial health. Have a look at their balance sheet. So assets 3 million um, and liabilities 200K, 600K. So we've got about three and a half, four millions worth of assets, 8 million market cap, but they're losing money every single month. Um, doesn't look good in that respect. They have got 3 million worth of cash, however, um, the cash runway isn't stable. It says they have less than a year of cash runway if the cash flow continues to reduce at historical rates. So when we look at past performance, of how they've done, minus 4 million in earnings isn't good when they don't even have that amount in cash, which will equal either dilution of shares or having to onboard more people, anything along these lines. This overall looks really negative for this stock and it's a great reason to short sell a bullshit stock. So I'm looking at this all the time in the afternoon trying to find interesting positions that are rallying off a of short term news, something good happened and overall it's not gonna make any effect on the company. Take these for a good run to the downside with a quick correction because it doesn't mean anything to these companies and overall benefit from that short term move. Banking 20, 30, 40% on penny stocks. And then I spend my afternoon just reviewing some of my bridging loans that I have and some of my investments within Tab HQ. Um, as we can see here that I don't, I basically checking my redemption dates, whether or not I've got any loans that are coming up for redemption. This is money that I lend out, make return on. You can see I'm making 10.87% on these two, 10.31 on this one. So the next one's not until August, so I've got a while for that, so nothing to really worry about. You can see my May interest payments have all been paid, which is fantastic. Um, and then I'll have a quick look at my travel lodge property. And we can see my travel lodge as well, return on investment slightly less, 7.62, but I get capital appreciation on that. And we don't have an estimated exit date for that, so I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy that money. So from a property side of things, don't need to worry about anything. Um, from a lending side, all I'm doing is looking at when my um, redemption date is, and I don't need to really worry about anything till the end of this year. So that's quite nice, that 300K is making 2,671 pounds a month. And then on the tap property side, it made 624 pounds in April, and May will update in the next few days. So overall making, um, Nice little turn there off that 400 grand, making about 3.2k a month uh, from 400k. Um, I will naturally increase my portfolio value in this, and there's some exciting projects that are coming up with Tab, so I'll be focusing on that. So, throughout my whole day, it's pretty much hit the gym, hit the foreign exchange markets, um, review my long term stock positions that I have, then look at penny stock trading then look at my property portfolio and then during all of this period of time is keeping up to date with the financial markets news any um, news releases and how they go to affect my positions so if you like this video then make sure we hit that thumbs up comment and subscribe for more content and i'll see you in the next video